It's cruising time, folks. Now, recently, my family and I set sail on the Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas for an eight-night cruise to the Southern Caribbean. Some stuff just blew my mind, and other things left me kind of scratching my head. Today, though, we're breaking down the top three highlights and the top two letdowns of our experience aboard the Odyssey of the Seas. We might even toss in a bonus at the end, so stick around and uh, join us today as we do just a little exploring. Get ready to set sail, folks, because today we're talking about Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. It's the second beast in the quantum class of super ships. This particular bad boy, one of the line's freshest offerings in recent years, can house over 5,000 thrill seekers. It comes with a crew of 1,600. It boasts a whopping 13 restaurants, and get this, it even has a fleet of bumper cars on board. Now talk about turning heads, the Odyssey is basically a floating city that's impossible to ignore. Right after Thanksgiving in 2023, we hopped on board the Odyssey of the Seas for an eight-night cruise that had us exploring Carousel, Aruba, and Royal's exclusive Coco Cay Island. Now toss in four sea days and you've got a recipe for adventure. The Odyssey is renowned for being a high-tech marvel of the seas, loaded with entertainment options that you're not going to find most other places. And needless to say, we were pretty eager to dive into the experience. Welcome to the unexpected wonders of our Odyssey cruise. Let's kick it off now with number one, a taste of the holidays. Our adventure began just two days after Thanksgiving, smoothly sailing into the opening days of December. And surprise, surprise, we stumbled upon a delightful holiday twist that kind of brought tears to our eyes during the Royal Caribbean escapade. And you see, when you sign up for a Caribbean cruise, you kind of anticipate the usual suspects. There's gonna be a buffet feast, there's gonna be fashion choices that you'd never really sport on land. There's going to be extravagant settings and environments, and of course the obligatory tropical tunes with steel drums by the pool. All classics, right? But hold on. This trip had an extra sprinkle of holiday magic. Picture this. Our tropical vibes are still there, but they're fused seamlessly with a touch of holiday cheer. Now, the ship glowed with festive decor, and we even had a legitimate Christmas tree lighting ceremony on the Esplanade complete with traditional Christmas tunes, a countdown from our cruise director and his tech-savvy team, and even a faux snowfall, which was really just soap suds playing the role of snow, but it, it, was, it was close enough. Three, two, one, the warmth of the holidays was practically inescapable, and even Coco K caught the festive bug decking the sandy dunes and swaying palms with Christmas vibes. Picture Christmas music playing in the wave pool, sandwiched between Jimmy Buffett, Bob Marley, and of course a sprinkling of the Zac Brown Band. Because, hey, why not? Yeah, why not? It was an unexpected yuletide treat in the sun-soaked tropics. Number two, the shows. Now the shows on the Odyssey had me, a self-proclaimed anti-musical guy, glued to my seat and not in an embarrassing way. Not too embarrassing, I guess. Uh, let's start off with Tony Tillman at the Royal Theater. Now I usually kind of doze off at musicals, but this guy, he had me hooked. Picture this, a multi-decade review of rock, R&B, pop, and a, a sprinkle of country, or at least his version of country, kind of an, an impression more than anything else, I suppose. Uh, Tony Tillman didn't just sing, but he practically danced circles around the stage and channeled his inner James Brown while keeping the audience in stitches. The next show that we saw was called The Effectors. Now, it's pitched as a super high-tech Broadway show, but let's be real, this would probably stick out like a sore thumb on Broadway. It's more of a superhero musical with vibes from Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark. I don't know if you remember that, but that was a thing. Go check on YouTube. Uh, four heroes in this one, each representing an entertainment technology. Uh, disco beats to contemporary dance, mind-blowing special effects, and yes, even drones flying out into the audience. Now the story behind it, there's not really much to talk about in terms of the story, but even though the music wasn't my jam, the creativity and the visuals were just huge, huge win. 
saving what I thought was the best for last, The Book, a new production at 270, which is a venue that is like nothing I've ever seen before. It's super high-tech and elaborate. Uh, the book has this vintage steampunk-type vibe as the Willy Wonka-esque protagonist takes us on a time and space journey within his magical book. That's really about all you need to know about the story. Now, imagine dancers and acrobats, contortionists and tumblers. They're appearing and they're disappearing like magic. Uh, it's an incredible singer, seamlessly time-traveling along with the protagonist, belting out hits from the last several decades. There's a roaming violinist, a disappearing and reappearing drummer, and all of this while the venue itself is twisting and turning and transforming. Uh, even for a cynic like me, the Odyssey of the Seas truly knocked it out of the park with this particular show. And really, who would have thought? Number three, The Variety. So variety, my friends, is the spice of life, or so I've heard, and the Odyssey of the Seas served it up in spades, just as I expected from Royal Caribbean from previous experiences. Now the pool deck might have bid farewell to a few of my old favorites, but fear not, they introduced the new pal to the party in the form of the North Star. Now picture this, it's a climate-controlled glass and steel gondola hanging off of a massive hydraulic arm, stretching almost half the ship's length. The doors close and up you go several hundred feet above the pool deck, offering jaw-trapping, panoramic views of the ship, the ocean, or really whatever port you happen to be on. Uh, when my family and I tried it, we were surrounded by nothing but the vast seas, and absolutely breathtaking. But as a quick word of caution, if heights aren't your thing, maybe you sit this one out. And now for the culinary explorers on board, Odyssey laid out a feast with 13 dining venues, from Royal Caribbean classics like the Windjammer Buffet or Sorrento's Pizza, to Italian delights like Giovanni's and Japanese treats at Izumi, and the mystical, whimsical Wonderland, which was inspired by the Lewis Carroll novel Alice in Wonderland. This place covered all bases. Everyone's taste buds got a little love on this particular cruise. And uh, did I mention that the Odyssey of the Seas also has an indoor wonderland called the Seaplex? Now this place promised to deliver more diversions than a choose-your-own-adventure novel. Picture this, it's a big area with pickleball courts, an arcade to awaken your inner child, a virtual reality chamber for those who want to get lost in other dimensions, a sports bar for the sports enthusiasts, and wait for it, a massive bumper car arena. And just when you thought it was as they say, over, they threw in basketball courts and an ice-themed laser tag arena. I'm still kind of scratching my head wondering how the crew managed to keep this whole circus running seamlessly, but hats off to them, they pulled it off like it was a walk in the park. Let's get real for just a moment. Not everything on the Odyssey was smooth sailing. Number one, out of order. The biggest letdown was the out-of-order signs that were getting a little bit more action than a rock star on stage. Our much-anticipated virtual reality attraction, yeah, that was out of order, and it looked like it may have been tossed overboard. The arcade, you know, a decent chunk of the games were either out of order or flirting with the idea of just disrepair. And throw in a couple of elevators playing hooky, which caused massive traffic jams, and then the pool deck, the sky pad, which is another virtual reality gem where you bounce on a trampoline with the masks on and harness, well, that looked like it had been cleared out, leaving nothing but a couple of lonely cornhole boards. Now, I get it, ships take a beating, but it's a bummer to see so many things not working, and from the looks of it, they probably haven't been working, despite still making star appearances in the marketing materials which is a little bit of a cruise buzzkill. Hey, before we get down to number two, can I ask you to smash that big old like button if you were enjoying the video, and hit the subscribe button if you're a travel fanatic like me who's into things like cruises and small town exploration and unexpected roadside attractions? Uh, and with that... Number two. The Royal Esplanade is a bit anticlimactic. Now, let's chat about the Royal Esplanade. It's a bit of a mixed bag. See, my first rendezvous with a Royal Caribbean Royal Promenade had me sold. It was a symphony of fun crafted by folks who clearly understood the showbiz game. 
Now imagine my excitement, anticipation, and just overall giddiness anticipating the grander two decks backed cult that is the Royal Esplanade. But reality didn't quite match the fantasy. Beautiful? Ab absolutely. Warm and humorous? Not so much. The Esplanade lacked the over-the-top decoration and whimsical themes of the smaller predecessors. The, the warmth felt replaced by a sense of safety. It lacked the vibrant colors, the live entertainment that is always surprisingly placed in the nooks and crannies. The bigger stores were still there, of course, but they were ghost towns more than shopping havens, mostly telling watches and perfumes and purses with rather hefty price tags. So what happened to the family-friendly touches? Things like the Cupcake Haven, the Candy Wonderlands, and the Ice Cream Parlors were nowhere to be found, and instead, just more jewelry stores took their place, and they even shifted the artwork auction to the gallery in the main area. And the Esplanade, though, it's undeniably nice, but it seemed to be lacking personality, and it catered more to a high-end cruiser that, honestly, I never seemed to actually lay eyes on during my cruise. It's like the Esplanade traded in its vibrant personality for a sleek but somewhat soulless upgrade. Now hold on to your hats, folks, because we've got a bonus highlight. It's the triumphant return of Guido. Now, if you've been around on this channel for over a year, you might remember Guido from our Mariner of the Seas adventure. This stowaway is a pro at getting caught, and when he does, he gets put to work showcasing his jaw-dropping skills on a custom tramp steamer piano to keep the tourist occupied. Now, Guido can pound out pretty much any tune you throw his way, but let's just say he's a little bit tired of the Titanic requests. The guy is a bundle of entertainment, though, and he's an all-around good dude. Running into him again on the Odyssey was an unexpected bonus that added a special touch to our trip. Now, if you missed Guido from the earlier video on the Mariner of the Seas Voyage, <laughs> no worries. Just click right here. It might involve Guido, a full-size piano, and a glass elevator packed to the brim. Until next time, folks, join us as we do just a little splorin'.